Let's talk about bold and confident faith. What does the scripture say about this? Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I love it because when you come boldly, you are coming with readiness and expectation to obtain, to receive. So that's why I said God loves bold faith because with bold faith, you know that you are going to receive from God. Faith is the hand that takes from God. Number one thing you need to know about bold faith is that bold faith pleases God. God doesn't want to be impressed by your performance and your actions and everything that you think you could do to deserve his goodness or his mercy or his favor. All God needs is for you to believe him. God wants to be believed. He doesn't want to be impressed. In fact, the only way you can impress God is to believe in that he is God. It's not about believing in that he is God because of what he can do or cannot do for you or because of what he has done or hasn't done for you. It's believing that he is God and he is who he says he is. Just like the Hebrew boys when they were there in front of Nebuchadnezzar and they saw the fire, this is factual, this is reality, we are going to be thrown into the fire. They told him, O oh king, we do not care if our God saves us or not, we believe him, so we are not bowing. That is the faith, even if he does not do what I'm asking of him. I will not be like a believer that says, God, if you don't do this, I'm going to leave the church. I'm going to stop serving you. I'm going to stop believing. No, 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 no. That's not bold faith. Bold faith is believing that God is who he says he is, even if you've not received what you want from him or what you've asked him of. And that is what makes God pleased, that you believe him to be God. And scripture says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So when you come to God, not based on what you need from him, but seeking him, like scripture says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which is it's not about how righteous you can be, it's about the righteousness that he has provided. You seeking that and receiving that, then you can come boldly. That's what gives you boldness to even approach him. So when you seek him, you should know there is always a reward. But you are not looking for the reward. You are looking for him as your number one reward, your priority. If God becomes your priority, every other thing is easy to get because everything is under his control. Number two, both faith believes to see the result. The evidence of faith is not sight. Paul Apostle said that we don't live by sight, we live by faith. The evidence of faith is believing to see. I know that the culture and the world system is built around making us think that you need to see to believe. But there is always something far beyond what you can see. So the truth is, this culture and the things it says and believes is always trying to withdraw from our faith. That is why you need to have your shield of faith belt. So that the devil will not use the culture and the things that you hear to pierce into your soul and disintegrate your faith. David said, I certainly believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Believing to see. I believe that I will see. As you're listening to this, you need to know that your faith should be based on I'm believing to see God's goodness. I'm believing to see God do this for me. I'm believing to see God change this situation. Number three, both faith anchors on God. Both faith does not anchor on self. It anchors on God. If God is not the anchor of your faith, if your performance is the anchor of your faith, then you don't have faith. Your faith is never about what you can receive from God, but about who God is. Is he a provider? That's how you can receive from him because he is. Is he a healer? That's how you can receive from him because he's a healer. So it anchors on who he is and what he has done already. And such faith is not based on your deservedness, your goodness, or your qualifications. You don't need to qualify for this. You only need to believe. That's the only prerequisite. Number four, both faith is personal. It is not shared. There has to be a personal conviction for your faith to be effective. It is not about this generalist knowledge of you saying, I know there is God, I pray to him, I'm not too close to him, but I know that he serves me, he helps me. So sometimes I go to church, sometimes I pray, sometimes I read my Bible. If you are taking it that way, you are not going to get to a place of receiving from God like you should. And as a believer, your faith has to become very personal. Take it personal. Take God personal. Take your faith in him personal. Which means, if you don't take it personal, you might be in a place of dealing with an unknown God. 
like the Athenians. They were praying to God and worshipping Him but they knew Him not. And a lot of believers are walking in today's world praying to a God they do not know because they have no personal conviction. It's either they are having conviction on their preacher, their pastor or whoever they are looking up to. So it's that person's prayer that they really believe and some people are also there who may not really believe in anybody's prayer for God to heal them. They just wish that when they pray to God, well, if it's God's will, it's going to answer. If it's not, it's not going to answer. But if you are sick, God's will has been declared that sickness is not a part of you, that by stripes you are healed. So why do you ask him if it is will? It means you don't take it personal. You don't know your right. You don't know him. And Paul went to Athens and spoke to them, reasoned with them about Jesus Christ and the gospel. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I notice that you are very religious in every way. And this is the situation of our world today. A lot of people are so religious. So, so religious. They pray. But then, you don't have knowledge of whom they are praying to. Your prayer is only as effective as who you are praying to. How do you pray to someone you don't even know that will answer you? You have to take God so personal such that you know that in Him you live, you move and you have your being. That without Him, your living is of no essence. Without Him, your moving is vanity. Without Him, your being, your identity is nothing. And at such point that you have this personal conviction, of faith in God, it makes God pleased. Number five, both faith is built on relationship. You cannot have a relationship or build a relationship with someone you do not know. You can't believe whom you don't know. You want to build a lasting and good relationship, a healthy one, you need to know whom you are dealing with. And for us to have both faith, we need relationship with God. And this relationship is not based on our love for Him or our performance, but based on His love for us and all that He has done for us, the finished work. He made this relationship possible. Without Him, it won't be possible. So at this point, we can come to God with an open heart, knowing that we are not far away, but we are close. He is close to us. We are His children and He is our God. So your both faith flourishes on relationship. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Number six, both faith is not about the size, but the author. The disciples told Jesus, increase our faith. So Jesus answered the disciples in Luke chapter 17. If you have faith. The question that they asked increased our faith. He said, if you have faith, which means they are asking the wrong question. They would want to know him more for their faith to increase. But they are saying increase our faith. But he says this faith is not found in the size or what you can do. It's found in the author. And the author of our faith is Jesus. So if you don't go to him and spend more time with him, for our faith to go up, which is hearing and hearing about Him, hearing more of Him. That's what makes us come to a place of increased faith, whereby our faith like a muscle is built up to become stronger. So if your faith is based on you and what you can do, it will crumble. But if your faith is fixed on Jesus, who is the author, it will flourish. In conclusion, the only indictment Jesus had against the disciples was, why are you of so little faith? When they worried, when they feared, when they were in lack, and when they were in doubt, he told them, why are you of so little faith? Which tells us that faith is the hand that receives from God. And when we receive so little from him, it means we are not operating with him. And Jesus is like, why are you believing so little? Why are you receiving so little? Why are you so scared to come to me? Because somehow we see God like we see our parents, who are humans, sometimes they are fed up with asking too much and we feel like God will be like, we are asking too much. Why are you asking too much? We feel like he's like our spouse that will be like, you are putting too much demand on me. But God says, I am full. I am God. I have inexhaustible supply, but you are not receiving and you are complaining. And there's a difference between complaining and asking to receive. When you come in faith, you are not coming to complain, to see if he will respond. 
you are coming to ask so that you can receive. Those are two different things. Because sometimes we come to God as Christians and we are asking as if we are begging or complaining to see if God will respond. And God told us, come to me boldly. Come confidently. Come to obtain. Which means the time I pray to God is not the time he makes my order. It's not the time he goes to work. It is that whenever I pray to him, before I even pray, my order has already been packaged. My prayer in faith is to appropriate it. He overrides the facts that I'm seeing in my present stage. And we have to come to a place of faith to know God is inexhaustible. God never runs out. God never complains that we have asked or are asking too much. And God is not afraid of us asking too much. And we have to even know that we can never ask too much of God because He has so much more. But we can only be in a place that we are not receiving more. Check the stories of the Bible. When Elisha meets that widow woman, he stood and collected the drums. And the drums were filled up according to the number that she collected. Which means, as much as you need, you can get, but you can only be the one that stops receiving. Because in God's sight, it is still flowing. You can only stop the pipe. You can only lock it up from receiving, which is locking yourself up from having this bold faith. And for every place of your fear, of your worry, of your lack and your doubt, know that God has supplies for you. He has provision that is inexhaustible. Jesus with the woman at the well, he was tired naturally, but when he sat there releasing to her, he was so filled. Jesus with Mary, spending time with Mary, Martha was complaining on the other hand, but Jesus is like Mary has chosen the good part. This is what I want. This is what makes me God. Faith pleases God. God loves both faith. So you are not trying to pity God by saying, I don't want to ask God too much. I've already asked God. He has already done a lot for me. No, 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 no. Ask. That's what it says. And it will be given. He didn't say ask and we will do review. We will review if you are asking what you should ask. He said ask boldly. And both faith has to agree with the will and the word of God. There's nothing that we need that God has not released. The only thing is that we are not taking it. Because that indictment, why are you of so little faith? I hope this video is of value to you. And it is a blessing and has inspired you. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is my YouTube channel. I am Uwem Akpan. Please subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video to others who may need to see this. For everyone that has been contributing, thank you so much. It encourages me a lot. So I don't take it lightly and I don't take it for granted that you contribute, that you comment. Thank you for liking this video, for contributing. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>